Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone watching this. Welcome to Microsoft JD Conf. This is the second day of the conference, and yesterday we had a blast. And tomorrow, we're going to have a blast again because we are on a roll. Um, my name is Bruno Borges. I'm a PM here at Microsoft. I work with the Java Engineering Group. And we are having a lot of fun. Believe me, Java at Microsoft goes way far as you can think of. And I'm getting feedback. So let me shut off all these tabs I have on my computer because I was getting my myself. I was listening to myself. That's not cool. Here's the thing. I have a few slides to show you before we get started with the keynote. So let me jump over to my slides because I have a few important information for you. So um, I want to talk quickly. If you're not here yesterday, I have a few logistics to share with you and the schedule and a few resources. So let's go ahead and talk about logistics. First thing, if you want to comment, send questions or anything like that, just go to Twitter and use the hashtag JDConf or you can send questions uh, over the chat on YouTube, on the live streaming over YouTube. You can find that on the Microsoft Developer Channel, and uh, it's it's streaming live there, so it shouldn't be hard to find. Um, the sessions are every 30 minutes after the keynote. They start at 9 a.m. and go all the way to the last session at 12.30. There will be a five minutes break between sessions, and um, we will have the speakers talking to each other. Uh, myself, I'll be uh, welcoming the next speaker and talking briefly with the previous speaker. So it's an opportunity to have a more uh, casual chat over these uh, weird times that we all live in. So important notes. This conference has free water. You just go to the kitchen, whatever place you have in your house or office, and yeah, you have free water. Go for it. Cookies may be available, right? If you, especially if you're at home, and if you don't have cookies, that's sad. That's sad. Why don't you have cookies at home? Everybody should have cookies. Here's the thing: you can go to YouTube and search for how to make cookies. You know, not just how to build Java apps. Right? There's lots of stuff at YouTube. Um, and the nearest bathroom, just around the corner, unless you have like a tall house with several floors and you forgot to put a bathroom in one of the floors where your office is, then you're going to have to go up or down the stairs. But still should be close. And no lines, no lines in your bathroom, hopefully. All right? OK, so we had a great first day uh, yesterday. Here are some tweets uh, that we actually got even before that. Uh, I will be collecting the tweets and uh, putting them at the beginning. Uh, to, um, I'll put I'll pull some tweets again at the end of this conference at, at this day uh, today. And tomorrow I'll bring some more and show you what other things uh, people are saying about it. Jim God is blogging about the conference, so check him out on Twitter, and you can get his insights, his perspective about JD Conf, about all the sessions and the speakers presenting all the content. Uh, Dr. Heinz is one of the speakers, a uh, great guy who lives in Greece and runs a conference called J. Crete, uh, along with Kirk Pepperdine. It's, a, it's an amazing spot. <laughs> and Kevin, Kevin, thank you so much for uh, sharing the Java conference by Microsoft. Yes, 2020 is a crazy year. Here we are. OK, so keynote starts at. 8 10 a.m <clears throat> oh, what a morning or even before that because i'm already running out of slides so join martin verberg and george adams george works with me on the pm team martin verberg leads the java engineering group here at microsoft and they will be talking to you about the things they are doing with open jdk contributions that the team has already done things that are they're exploring um Adopt the JDK, how we help maintain the infrastructure and builds, et cetera. So it's an interesting conversation. So you don't you really don't want to miss this keynote. 
if you want to know why Microsoft has a Java engineering group, why does Microsoft has a Java team? That's the question everybody's asking. Yes, we do. Yes, we have a reason, or actually multiple reasons. So here's the schedule for today after the keynote. We have several speakers that you may have heard of, may have seen before. There is one person, one speaker here I would like to highlight, Venkat. There's another speaker I would like to highlight, Trisha G. And then another one, Emily Young, and Monica Backwith, and Kate Stanley, and Melissa McKay, and Jesse G, and Mario Gray. All of them, actually, because this was a very special conference that we put together with all, all of our friends in the Java community. Microsoft, actually, uh, in the Java engineering group, we have lots of Java champions. We have great relationship with the Java community. We have lots of friends. And when we told them, hey, would you like to be part of a Java conference hosted by Microsoft? Everybody, no exception, said yes. So just stick around, watch these sessions. If you cannot make today, that's OK. Videos will be available on demand. So there's no reason not to see all of these sessions. And sessions, again, are 25 minutes, very fast-paced, very amazing content, only the best of, of them all. So just, just stay together with us. Tomorrow, we have keynotes by Mala Gupta and Bruno Souza. If you want to understand how to work in the Java community, how the Java community can work uh, with you and for you and together, definitely check out Mala Gupta's uh, segment on tomorrow's keynote. And Bruno Souza has been doing an amazing job helping Java developers, or any developer, actually, not just Java developers, but it's because Bruno has a history with Java. But any developer, actually, he's been uh, teaching and coaching and helping developers how to uh, expand their careers uh, and how to get better jobs, how to, to um, get new learnings and really expand the knowledge. Uh, how to contribute to open source and bump up their uh, um, um, careers. So I think those two keynotes combine really well because once you watch Mala Gupta, you understand how the Java community works. And then you watch Bruno and you understand how you can work with the Java community. So definitely a keynote that you have to um, watch. And in terms of the schedule for the last day tomorrow, we have lots of speakers um and we have red hat with edson yanaga we have uh dr heinz we have simon reader from azul system our partner uh we have a few microsoft talks let me talk to you about these microsoft talks we have rich turner rich is actually a dotnet guy who we, i am trying to turn him over to the Java side, and uh, Rich will share uh, tips and tricks for productivity for Java developers on Windows. So if you're a, if you're a Java developer and you work with Windows, Rich will tell you how to use the Windows terminal for Java, how to play uh, with Windows subsystem for Linux, and things like that. So it's, I think it's a very interesting talk. Jonathan Giles, our Java architect for the Azure SDK team, he will actually bring his knowledge and share with you how to design great Java APIs, how to design and build great Java APIs. Um, and finally, Reza Rahman will share uh, all the things that you need to know about Java EE, um, especially on Azure, how, how we are supporting Java EE standards in Jakarta EE uh, on our Azure services. And finally, Dashaun Carter, who just recently moved to Redis Labs. Dashaun, congratulations on your new role at Redis Labs. And Deshaun will share uh, a little bit of Azure and Spring. Finally, we're going to have a, an Ask Me, Ask Me Anything panel at 12.30 tomorrow with the Java Engineering Group. We're going to have Martin and George, myself. And we're going to have a few of our engineers in our JVM team. And uh, any questions that people have, just bring them over. If you have a question that you want to send now so you don't forget, just put that on the hashtag uh, JDCoff on Twitter. And uh, make sure you mention me or Martin or George or somebody that will be on the panel so we can get the notification easily. So without further ado, I would like to welcome on, on the virtual stage, Martin Verberg and George Adams. 
Hello, Martin. Hey, Bruno, how are you? I'm good. How are you? And George, hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, we that's can. Good. That's good. That's better than last time. <laughs> you two are in the UK. Is that right? That is correct. It's been rainy. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. What, what do you mean it's raining in the UK? That's, <laughs> that's, that's where the rain comes from, George. Like anywhere in the world, when it's raining, people go like, oh, here comes this UK rain again. Like you guys outsource that rain. Actually, well, you export that rain. We export the rain. Anyways, <laughs> well, that's, welcome. That's an and, interesting uh, keynote. <laughs> that's an interesting. Yeah, yeah I know. Of course. <laughs> Next why, time. <laughs> why, why should why should why should it be different? We need to talk about rain. It's it's an important subject. It's it scales, by the way, very easily. All right, <laughs> no more jokes. Please bring on your slides or whatever you have to share and talk and uh, take over from here, man. See you later. We, we did slides, right, George? Somewhere? Wait, I, I thought oh, this was a nice slide keynote. Oh, oh we here we go. Oh, thank goodness oh, well. for that. Next time, next time. Uh, cool, well, we're, we're already running a minute late, which we always seem to be. So I guess we'll uh, we'll get things rolling. So uh, thanks, Bruno, although he's, he's dropped off already for such a inspiring introduction as always. Um, welcome to the, the day two keynote, uh, Microsoft Java in you. Uh, we've specifically included you if you're watching. Um, my name is George Adams. Uh, as Bruno mentioned, I'm a program manager in the uh, Java engineering group. And I'm joined by Martin, who is the principal group manager uh, for the Java engineering group. Uh, before we get started, I'd just like to say a massive thank you to everyone who has uh, made this event possible and to all of you who have attended so far. Uh, it's super exciting to be talking at Microsoft's first ever Java conference. Uh, and we hope there will be real beer and real cookies that aren't in your uh, in your kitchen next time. So uh, hopefully you'll come back next year. Um, so to kick things off, we're going to talk about the past, which is uh, something that unfortunately we felt that we had to do. Uh, luckily for me, my, my scapegoat was that I was at school uh, during this particular period. So uh, I'm going to hand over to my dinosaur of a colleague, Martin, who's going to fill us in by what I'm talking about. Excellent. And I'm very pleased to be called a dinosaur. According to my five-year-old, dinosaurs are just the best thing ever. So I'm going to, going to take that as a major compliment. Um, yes, the distant past. Uh, when Java was in a simpler age, back in the late 90s and early noughties, we used Notepad for our software development. We had a printed stack of Java Doc on our desks next to us. Uh, and if you're really brave and bold, you're using Ant as the uh, bleeding edge build tool of choice. So let's revisit. Let's go back to 1997, George. Let's fire on. Let's go. Awesome. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. Uh, Visual J++. We're sorry about that. Uh, clearly, at the time, Microsoft wanted to uh, jump in on Java's popularity. Uh, they were very keen on uh, trying to see if they could get Java to work as a first-class citizen in terms of the uh, Windows uh, UI toolkit. Um, the approach by today's Microsoft standard was completely wrong. Uh, you know, we apologize for that in the past. Um, and uh, we uh, hope to demonstrate to you today why the Jet Microsoft of today is very, very different, and, and we're going to engage in it in a very different way. So uh, we'll touch on one more point about this. On to the next slide, please, George. Awesome. So as you can see, when the internet was back in low fidelity, you see the wonderful sort of pixelated image there of poor old Mr. Mr. Bill Gates uh, with the really a bit of a clickbait title there. Uh, we're using the BBC, of course, because we are from the UK. Um, for those of you who are playing Spot the Accent, uh, my accent is actually from New Zealand. Uh, for which I humbly apologize. I will attempt to speak uh, slowly enough and pronunciate my words correctly so you can understand me. Uh, luckily, we have George here who does speak the Queens uh, somewhat better than I do. Um, but again, you know, back in the day when big companies sued each other over this stuff, that's what happens. Uh, so we go for a different approach. So over to George to talk about the new Microsoft. Thanks, Martin. Uh, so luckily, uh, I'll, uh, I'll reiterate, luckily, we are a new Microsoft. Um, in 2018, our CEO, Sachin Adela, uh, said, we are all in on open source. Um, and that was a really pivotal moment in the strategic direction that Microsoft took going forwards with all of its internal products. Um, so with Java being a pretty new concept, uh, let's dive straight into Java and see how sort of 
if that philosophy prevails, let's say, uh, in the in the org that we've put together. Um, so Microsoft has used Java very heavily uh, in the past five years uh, in all sorts of products, uh, and we wanted to give something back. Uh, but we wanted to approach the Java ecosystem humbly. Uh, we have a really strong connection with supporting developers through tooling, and we wanted to bring some of that strength to the Java ecosystem. Uh, and we want to be focused on being part of the community. Uh, we spent lots of time signing agreements, which Martin will talk about later on. I think he's run out of ink in his pen. Um, and talking to developers like yourselves and building partnerships with other key companies. Uh, for the cynics in the room, I'm sure there are some, uh, we are obviously a commercial entity. Uh, and the best thing we can do is make Java great on Azure and hope that you'll try it out. Uh, but Java really is a broad ecosystem. Uh, so without further ado, back to Martin, who's going to talk a little bit about the JClarity acquisition. So uh, for my sins, uh, this time, roughly this time last year, I was the uh, CEO of JClarity, which was a, a Java performance tooling startup using machine learning to figure out why your JVM wasn't running so well. Uh, George was actually working with me as our director of open source at the time. And Kirk Pepperdine is another name that you all uh, have heard of before, who was uh, the CTO of the company. Um, and Microsoft uh, came knocking on our door. Uh, and at the time, there were, were a few companies interested in, in J Clarity and our technology. Um, and the thing that really, you know, struck home for us when we flew over to Redmond and we, we chatted to the various senior execs at Microsoft was the, the real wholehearted uh, truth of that, you know, Microsoft was all in on, on open source. Uh, they had open source.NET Core, they had Visual Studio Code. Um, they're working on TypeScript. Uh, they have this huge open source office now. Uh, they one of the biggest contributors to the Linux uh, kernel, uh, so on and so forth. Um, and they were just super excited to really hear about the Java story and, and see how they could help. Um, and you know, it was a bit of a no-brainer for us to come and join. So here we are today. Uh, and of course, we have bolstered uh, the JClarity acquisition with a bunch of other. JVM experts for the Java Engineering Group. And uh, let's jump onto the next slide and talk a little bit about that. So here's the first of a little bit of kind of behind the scenes information we're going to give you in this keynote, which is stuff we you know don't regularly talk about as a big company. You know, big companies are always a little bit careful about talking about the internal stuff, but we'll, we'll share some things here. Um, just like the Java ecosystem itself, it was super important for us to pull together an incredibly diverse and distributed team. Uh, and we set about doing just that. So uh, Microsoft went out and uh, hired some uh, industry luminaries, uh, names that you may have heard of, like Monica Beckwith, who was the former Java architect at ARM and previously at Sun and Oracle in the Java platform group there. Uh, we had folks like Charlie Gracie, one of the principal engineers at IBM on the OpenJ9 uh, runtime, and a whole host of Microsoft runtime infrastructure and tooling veterans who uh, once they'd heard that Java there was going to be a Java engineering group internally, you know, jumped at the chance to, to come and join us. Um, the super interesting thing about this group is that we are uh, over uh, about five or six time zones. We have folks in the UK, France, Austria, Canada, East and West Coast, uh, the US, East Coast, West Coast, Central. Um, so we really are kind of scattered quite far around the world. Um, and this can provide, you know, uh, a whole host of challenges. Um, we're also a multi-generational team. We have folks who are fresh out of graduation and university all the way through to industry veterans uh, and people from a whole bunch of different cultural backgrounds. Um, and at Microsoft, one of the things that we work on internally across the whole company is about diversity and inclusion. So we spend an awful lot of time um, on uh, some inclusion training, uh, figuring out uh, the cultural norms, the communication norms, uh, what binds us together as a group. Uh, we use things like architecture decision records and pillar documents to make our decisions. Um, and we have a whole host of uh, initiatives like that running internally. So uh, interestingly, my role is, is probably more about the communication and culture than it is uh, about the exact technical engineering, which I leave to the experts in my group. On to the next slide. Cool, thanks Martin. So, um... As I mentioned already, Java is used in many different business areas in Microsoft. Um, LinkedIn is, is the key one, which uh, is why we gave it such a large box. Um, LinkedIn, for those that aren't aware, is not only one of the largest JVM users in Microsoft, it's actually one of the largest JVM users on the planet. Uh, it has over 250 million JVMs running or something like that anyway. Um, 
And we have over a thousand developers building native Xamarin apps. Uh, and of course, the Surface Duo depends on Android. Uh, there are several services running in Azure that depend on Java, and the list keeps on growing, uh, as well as SQL Server coming with Java embedded out of the box, uh, and our good old game, Minecraft. Um, so when things sort of uh, got together and the team was assembled, uh, we started with LinkedIn. Uh, and we looked at where we could help with performance tuning. Um, and, and so when you've got so many JVMs running, uh, it's important that performance is, is, is running nicely, that your performance is key. Uh, and because LinkedIn is still growing users, that data is only getting bigger. Uh, so we had to help them with as many JVM optimizations as we could. Uh, we're focusing on a lot of garbage collector at the moment. Uh, and Martin's going to cover some of the patches in Shenandoah later on in the deck. Um, and behind Azure Big Data, there are Apache Big Data projects that all run on the JVM. Uh, we've got a native Java SDK for all the Azure services. And we have some massive third-party customers, such as Adobe and Daimler, running their Java workloads on Azure today. Uh, our engineers also tell us they've been working on Minecraft. Uh, but unfortunately, we're a little bit skeptical of how much work is actually getting done on that project. Um, if we lift the curtain up again and peek behind the scenes, uh, you'll see that from day one, our main focus was on establishing an internal center of excellence. We created a Java and Microsoft community as a central hub, and naturally cross-group and team collaboration fell from this. There were lots of opportunities. Uh, Microsoft is a very large organization using Java in far more places than we had ever realized when we joined. Uh, and unsurprisingly, there is a lot of big data on Java there. Uh, if we look at the kind of de development workflow that we would typically use, we send in a combination of VM, tooling, and services experts to assess. And then work is prioritized based on customer needs and ecosystem impact. We have an upstream everything policy. Uh, this is really key. We aim to upstream all of our changes to the OpenJDK project, uh, as it allows other JVM users to benefit from our changes as well. Um, if we go over to developer outreach for a minute, um, the developer outreach folks have been working really hard to provide the ecosystem with high quality informative material. Uh, that's via our blogs, uh, via our Twitter channel. Uh, and we've also got some really useful pages on our docs channel, uh, which help people with migrating to Java 11 and so forth. Uh, we've spoken at or attended countless conferences, including Oracle Code 1, DevNexus, FOSDEM, uh, DevOps UK, DevOps Belgium. Uh, and also, we have a little internal bet going on as to how many Twitter followers we'll have at the end of this conference. Uh, so if you haven't already, please, please, please uh, follow our Twitter channel, uh, and you may well be able to get Martin and I on Xbox as our promotion. Um, so <laughs> please remember to do that one thing. Uh, so I think it's back to Martin to talk about the OCA. Awesome. Thank you, George. Yes, uh, every, everybody would love an Xbox for, for sure. And I, I know my, my son has uh, definitely been waiting for that one. Even though he's only five years old, he's not even allowed to play on an Xbox for crying out loud. Uh, but he still knows about them for some reason. Um, Cool. So the OCA. So this is a really important agreement and a bit of a historical moment that Microsoft uh, signed this, uh, in fact. Um, this is the official Open JDK Contributor Agreement, uh, and this is what you need to sign in order to contribute back to Java itself. Uh, now, for Microsoft to sign such a document, uh, which has some uh, some legal, legal ties, effectively, and some, some business impl implications and things like that, um, was a, a really huge milestone for us. And it enabled our whole Java engineering group to start contributing patches and working on things like the ARM port, which I'll, I'll dig into a little bit later. Um, so we're incredibly proud of this moment. As you can see, it got some, some tech news coverage with people scratching their heads, again, wondering whether hell had frozen over. Um, but this was a fantastic milestone. And um, to kind of give you a little bit of behind the scenes info on that one, you know, as you would expect of a big company, you have to engage with uh, your legal arm, get buy-in from senior business uh, folks, and so on and so forth. And, and it just normally takes time. Uh, there was such enthusiasm for us to get this OCA signed that um, our internal legal folks uh, you know, have, have commented that this was one of the, the things that was signed in, in record time by their standards, um, which really sort of is a bit of a testament to uh, how seriously and, and how quickly we wanted to get this stuff done. Cool. We'll uh, dig into a little bit more about uh, the community stuff. So as uh, George mentioned at, at the beginning of, of the, uh, the talk, um, you know, having uh, us join and be partners within all of the Java communities is, is of critical importance. 
uh, Java is uh, an incredibly diverse uh, and federated universe. Um, we have Oracle, obviously, who uh, runs, you know, Java Enterprise. Oh, sorry, uh, Java Standard Edition, uh, and you know, is uh, the leader of the Open JDK project. Um, and so they're, of course, naturally seen as a bit of a uh, leader in the Java world. But the reality is, the Java ecosystem is just vast. Um, it runs on little IoT devices, on big data and big compute clusters. Um, it's used for, you know, standard line of business applications. It's used for games. Uh, it's just everywhere. Um, and so it was really critical that Microsoft uh, joins in the key communities, such as OpenJDK, such as Adopt OpenJDK, which is the uh, world's uh, most popular OpenJDK distribution behind uh, Oracle's, um, and joining things like the Java community process, which is the Java standards body. Now, that's one we haven't completed uh, quite yet. And you'll see my little legal hammer symbol there, because again, this requires us to look carefully through a lot of legal agreements and, and make sure that uh, things like uh, patents and all that sort of stuff uh, are covered off. But again, there's an incredible amount of willingness for Microsoft to go do this. And uh, we hope to share the good news with you uh, sometime this calendar year. All right, so uh, as mentioned previously, we signed the OCA and straight away our engineers who were, were chomping at the bit to go and actually work on, on the core Java itself uh, started working on a whole bunch of patches. Uh, I'll talk to a couple here very quickly and then dig into uh, one or two of them uh, and show you a little bit of the code behind the scenes. So as you can see, we had customer workloads which were really concerned about garbage collection. Um, so you can see from the titles here that we were doing a lot of work uh, with Red Hat uh, in uh, fixing up and tidying up some of the areas uh, of the Shenandoah garbage collector. collector. Now, Shenandoah is a garbage collector which is uh, designed for low pause, large heap situations. And uh, it, is av it was available in Java 11, but sort of on a side repository. So we worked with Red Hat to uh, clean up some of the, uh, the last remaining bugs and issues. And uh, together with Red Hat and others, we proposed that it get merged into Java 11 proper. Uh, and then there was some really fantastic engineering done by the Red Hat folks to uh, make sure that could land in a very safe manner. Uh, basically, if you don't switch Shenandoah on, it's, it's a no-op as far as the JVM is concerned. Um, and this has now enabled Shenandoah for all Java 11 users out there. So the entire ecosystem can now use this wonderful garbage collector. You'll also see that we worked on things like Mac OS code signing, right? Everyone who's been upgrading their uh, Mac OS X uh, behind the scenes has probably run into uh, Apple's increasing tightening of security. Uh, and it was no different for Java. And so George here actually uh, spent a lot of time upstream to adopt OpenJDK, looking at the code signing issue uh, and submitting some patches directly to OpenJDK for that. Uh, so I'll dive into the anatomy of a specific patch next. Awesome. So here's an example of one of the patches that uh, Aditya, one of our uh, principal engineers, uh, worked on. So he was running uh, a tool called JC Stress, which stresses the garbage collector and some of the internals of Hotspot when he was looking at a whole bunch of this Shenandoah work. And JC Stress, sure enough, crashed uh, the JVM whilst we were running Shenandoah. And when he dug in, he had a look at the C1 generated code, which is the C1 is the first of the just-in-time compilers. We call it the client uh, compiler as such. And uh, there was just a little bug there, which was treating 32-bit values uh, and not up, up casting them to 64 bits uh, on 64-bit hosts. And so, you know, sometimes you always hear developers complain, oh, it's the compiler's fault. Well, in this case, it actually really was. Um, so that's just, you know, one small example of, of the type of patches we work on. Uh, we'll quickly jump to another one. Here is one about MD5 hashing. Now, MD5 hashes is something that all of you are probably using under the hood today. Um, the security experts amongst you will, will uh, argue, and, and I, I sympathize with this, that MD5 is, is an aging um, technique that should really be replaced by more modern ones. But the reality is there's a lot of MD5 running out there today, uh, and especially if you're using Java 11. Um, and uh, we detected, uh, Ludovic in particular, uh, detected that the MD5 hash was uh, actually written in Java itself, which is normally perfectly fine, but it's such an intense operation at scale um, for folks who are constantly uh, hitting this, that he converted it to what we call an intrinsic. So when the Java call goes into Hotspot, a Hotspot makes the jump directly to a piece of assembly code, which is, you know, 
perfectly hand coded for each architecture. And I've just given the example here of the uh, assembly that Ludovic wrote for the X64 architecture. But he also ported this for ARM64 and other platforms as well. Uh, and so folks uh, for, who are going to be you know, moving to Java 16, if you're having to do MD5 hashing, it just got about 15% faster. So thank you, uh, Ludovic, for that one. And on to the next one. Stack allocation. So this was our first major attempt at doing some really deep dive uh, research and development and looking at uh, adding a major feature to Java. Uh, now, all Java users out there today uh, tend to experience uh, challenges with garbage collection, uh, and that is due to the amount of objects being uh, effectively being put on the heap. So we call that GC pressure. Uh, and whatever we can do at the JVM level to reduce that pressure will just help overall JVM performance. Uh, and we had a hypothesis, uh, Nicola uh, and uh, Charlie did in our group, that we could replace a, a bunch of heap allocation with stack allocation instead. Uh, so instead of creating objects on the heap, if we can prove that the object would never, ever escape, uh, then we can just pop it on the stack instead, which, uh, as far as JVM performance is concerned, is far, far more efficient. So let's have a quick look at an example of how that would work. So here, if you just uh, have a quick scan of the code, um, you can see that uh, in the line from the from section there where we declare a new my class uh, object, that in the old days would have been typically uh, assigned on the heap um, with all of the overhead that that causes for the garbage collector. Now, with the stack allocation uh, patch that uh, Nicola and Charlie came up with, um, because they were able to determine that that uh, instantiation could never, ever escape, um, they were able to stack allocate that instead. Now, under the under the hood, there is a myriad of ways that objects can escape in Java. Right, you can have uh, links back to that object from something else on the heap. Um, there's return values. There's all sorts of things that go on, and so the internal coding around this has to be very very defensive and very cautious. Um, and uh, I'll show you some of the patch uh, in the next slide. Actually, it gives you a small indication. So hopefully that code is legible for folks, uh, even folks watching this on a small screen. And you can see this is just a tiny snippet of all the work that needed to be done. And you can see by reading the comments uh, and you have a look at the checks and balances in the code here, uh, how much checking that the engineers had to do in each, each case. And there's a whole host of these type of statements. Um, so in the interest of doing no harm, we're still actually working on this concept. Uh, we don't believe we have captured all of the cases, all of the edge cases yet. And we're looking at uh, simpler alternatives of uh, if giving the, the same benefit, but with less internal changes to the JVM. Uh, but this is kind of some of the deeper, longer term research that we're doing to try and uh, improve Java for everybody out there. All right, I believe it's uh, over back to you, George. Thanks, Martin. Um, so sort of when we when I showed you the timeline before, uh, over the period of a year, uh, we've been able to expand some really brilliant partnerships uh, with some pretty major uh, other companies playing in the Java world today. Uh, we worked very closely with Oracle on getting web logic into the Azure marketplace. Uh, we've worked very closely with IBM on getting WebSphere cloud packs uh, supported. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've worked with Azul, who is the current uh, supplier of the default JVM in Azure. Uh, we also work very closely with Red Hat, particularly on the Shenandoah collaboration that Martin mentioned on the previous slide, uh, as well as getting OpenShift running on Azure, which is pretty cool. Uh, we also talk to Intel and ARM pretty regularly about future architectures so that we can always ensure that Java takes advantage of those hardware gains. Uh, so hopefully we stay ahead of it rather than having to try and patch things up after a new architecture release. Uh, we also were really, really lucky to be able to talk at Microsoft's premier conference for developers. Uh, that is MS Build, for those that aren't familiar. Um, and we were lucky because we were able to introduce Microsoft's commitment to the developer community. Um, and we're pleased to say there was minimal heckling uh, and a lot of genuine surprise and interest. Uh, maybe it was your calming voice, Martin. I'm, I'm not sure. I thought there'd be more heckling. <laughs> um, the .NET crowd also wasn't very aware of the newly announced six-month release cadence uh, and Java's recent advancements. So there was there was a win-win for everyone being there, really. Um, I think one of the slides that was always quite interesting to me is, is why Java and why do this now? Um, you may well hear from the odd JavaScript folk that you speak to that Java is dead. Well, that is clearly not the case. Uh, looking at this recent poll from Fosbytes, 
Uh, Java is still the second most relied upon Java programming language uh, out there. Uh, and, and, and you can see JavaScript doesn't even, doesn't even sort of reach this uh, level. I think it came in at about eighth or ninth. Uh, if we look at the GitHub annual Octaverse report, which is slightly different, uh, that's based on uh, contributions, PRs, and what's sitting in repositories, uh, we'll see that Java, despite being just overtaken by Python in 2019, is still the third most commonly used programming language out there. So there's still a huge demand for Java running in production environments. Um, and so in turn, there's a, there's a huge demand for running Java on Azure. And that's why we're doing this now. Um, there's been a huge amount of talk in the news recently about ARM. Uh, Martin mentioned ARM in some of his patches earlier on. Um, and of course, Microsoft announced the new Surface Pro X, which is running Microsoft's SQ2 ARM-based processor. Uh, there's also the exciting folding Surface Pro Duo, uh, which is running an ARM chip on an Android operating system. Uh, it's not just Microsoft that's on this bandwagon. Apple recently announced their silicon chip, which will uh, be put into all of their MacBook Pros and Mac Minis and computers. Um, and also Google ported Chrome OS to ARM, uh, which is a huge step in the uh, progress of the Chromebook uh, and hopefully gives them a better win for the battery life. Uh, and so if ARM is so relevant, it only makes sense to port Java to Windows on ARM 64. And, uh, and luckily, that's exactly what we did. So uh, back to you, Martin. Cool, thank you. Uh, so this was a really exciting privilege for Microsoft to be able to go and do this in its first year, and that was to actually port OpenJDK, or Java itself, to a completely new platform, and that is Windows on ARM. Um, luckily, of course, we had uh, leading the group, Monica Beckwith, who was the uh, Java architect at ARM previously, as I mentioned before, uh, and a couple of other of our fine engineers, Ludovic and Bernard, who had uh, a lot of experience working on ARM64 uh, platforms, and uh, they immediately set to work. Um, so one of the things they did straight away, and again, this really talks a lot about the uh, ecosystem partnerships we have, is we went and spoke to Red Hat, who were the lead maintainers for the Linux ARM64 port at OpenJDK. And I had a chat to them uh, sort of about our proposed design and architecture for bringing this Windows port in and quickly uh, gained their collaboration, which was fantastic and really much appreciated from us. Uh, and we set about generalizing some of the Linux ARM64 code, especially around uh, the build and, and tool chain, uh, to ensure that other platforms like Windows and subsequently Mac could be added. Uh, we then went forth and did all the hard work of actually doing the port itself, uh, starting by cross-compiling, um, looking at fun things like the R18 register on Windows ARM. And uh, I won't dig into too much detail in this keynote because Monica is actually going to give a talk about this later on today, and she will give you the all the gory details. Uh, but needless to say, there was uh, much gnashing of teeth, uh, peering at assembly code and C code, um, scratching our heads at uh, build chain, uh, build tool chain anomalies uh, and other fun things like that. Uh, but we've landed it successfully. Uh, we wrote the JDK enhancement proposal, which is how you get major features into uh, open JDK and Java. Uh, and I'm very pleased to say that was approved and landed for Java 16. So when you go and grab uh, either an early access build of Java 16 today, um, or if you go and gra or just if you want to wait for GA, uh, which I think is in March, uh, you can go and run Java on your Surface Book Pro X. It'll be awesome, um, and probably the reason why our group will be buying several of them purely for testing out Java, of course. Um, yeah. So again, if you want to hear more details, please do visit uh, Monica's talk uh, later on. Uh, which brings me on to the next important thing we need to do when we build Java internally. So uh, next slide, please. So more legalese, more agreements uh, Microsoft had, had to go and sign, and we were very happy to do so. So in order to make sure that when you make significant changes to Java that you are still compliant with the specification, you must pass something called the TCK, the Technical Compatibility Kit. Uh, and in order to get access to that, you have to sign an agreement called the OCTLA. I won't bore you with the details too much on that, but needless to say, there was some more legal eagle work involved on, on that one. And uh, as you say, it was uh, uh, my boss's pen, actually, who uh, whose ink started to run dry after all of this. Um, we now have the TCK, and we're running that internally. It is an incredible amount of work to get set up. Um, so you run it on a per-version platform basis. Um, it's lots of CI, CD work. George is uh, 
had the pleasure of doing this before at Adopt Open JDK previously when Adopt had the, had the TCK. Uh, and there are manual tests. So we're back in the early noughties where people have to, you know, click click with their mouse on a screen in order to, to pass a test suite. Um, and trying to figure out how to do that in a concurrent and parallel way to reduce build times is, is really important. And so we work with Adopt Open JDK upstream on some common test harnesses around that. Cool. So that's uh, that topic escaped. So uh, on to Adopt Open JDK for you, George. Thanks, Bartone. Um, so for those that aren't familiar with the Adopt Open JDK project, um, its goal is to provide rock solid Open JDK and also Eclipse Open J9 uh, binaries for the Java ecosystem. Uh, but it also does a lot more than that. It provides infrastructure as code, as Bartone just mentioned. Uh, it also has a build farm for builders of Open JDK on just about any platform that can build Java today. Um, Microsoft's been a proud sponsor of the project since 2018, providing Azure credits to, uh, to help it grow. Uh, and we're really excited to announce that we've just renewed that Azure sponsorship for three years. Um, and that is so that uh, we can see the project's critical infrastructure continue. Uh, and hopefully we can kind of meet the project's needs as it continues to grow. Um, it's also to provide a bit of context here, um, the project is moving towards more dynamic infrastructure rather than having lots of static VMs spinning around all day. Um, and so what they're needing now is, is more and more machines spinning up for short bursts of time. And so we wanted to do was give them lots of Azure credits so that when they want to run a test suite that takes 17 hours, uh, they can chop that up and they can very quickly plow them through on 100 nodes or whatever they need. Um, and that's proven to be very effective. Um, so just to dive quickly into what that build and test pipeline would look like, um, all of the source code is cloned down and mirrored from Mercurial or the uh, newly announced Scara project on GitHub. Um, and when we kick off a build at Adopt Open GDK, we select a branch, uh, be that master or dev. Um, and then that source code is pulled in and it enters our build, test, and deploy pipeline. Uh, that is all run in a Jenkins instance, um, and it goes through the build. If the build is successful, we go into the test phase where we run literally millions, I think it's 85 million tests uh, for every major release, which is pretty incredible. Um, and then that build gets deployed and made available at the website or the API or the installers or however you would consume the adopt binaries today. Uh, the really interesting thing to point out here uh, is the approved third-party OpenJDK binaries line. Uh, what this represents today is the Red Hat provided reference implementation build of OpenJDK. Uh, so that is about as vanilla as you can get. Uh, and they put their binaries through our test and deploy stage. Uh, and that then appears on the Adopt OpenJDK website as an alternative download. Uh, but we also have lots of other vendors that are working on the project. We're doing Dragonwell builds from Alibaba. Uh, we're doing Coreto builds. Um, as well as working with Azul um, on sort of midterm release support. Um, and so it may or may not come as no surprise uh, that Adopt Open JDK very recently hit 200 million downloads. Um, depending on what Java server you look at today, uh, you'll see that Adopt Open JDK is, is, tends to be at least the number two most popular Open JDK distribution out there. Uh, why is that? That's mainly because of the multi-vendor support out there. So you can get all of the vendors working on it in one single place. Uh, Adopt Open JDK is a community effort. Uh, there's no single vendor behind it, which means there's no vendor lock-in if you want to consume their binaries. Uh, and to be clear here, Microsoft is working with its direct competitors on this project, which is pretty cool. Um, as to coin the old term, nobody competes on build farms. Um, and I'd like to keep it that way. If we can, uh, if we can all collaborate on the whole rubble bit and then take away and do the interesting stuff, um, then I think that's a win for every company involved. Um, there's also a really exciting thing to announce um, is that Eclipse is taking on all of the responsibility for the Adopt Open JDK project. Uh, and as part of that, it will be rebranding to Eclipse Adoptium. Uh, to provide a bit of context behind this, uh, Adopt Open JDK is currently backed by the London Java community, uh, which is quite close to Martin's heart. Um, and we kind of outgrew it being a very small user group um, that's basically a non-profit. Uh, and so the Eclipse Foundation has a deep history with the Java ecosystem. Uh, it has proven structures for strong vendor-neutral project governments, 
uh, IP flow protection, as well as world-class marketing, legal, and hosting support. Uh, so it really was a no-brainer when it came to moving the project. Uh, we also have a technical steering committee today. Uh, that's always infamously incorrectly coined the technical steering committee because it isn't technical at all. Uh, we're actually just a steering committee. Um, and so what that will happen is we're going to split that up and we're going to have a project management committee, which will handle all of the technical detail. And then we're going to have a working group and a steering committee around that, which will handle things like financials, uh, handle outreach, conferences, who can buy the T-shirts and stuff like that. Um, so I think it's back to Martin to talk about a few projects that um, that we've been involved in and how you can deploy Java to Azure. Cool. So uh, before I speak to this, I just wanted to touch on, on Adopt Open JDK. So it uh, really is a, a labor of love that both George and I were involved in uh, before we joined Microsoft. So George was actually uh, interning at IBM at the time, and I was running J Clarity. And um, we had both seen that there was a, a real challenge coming in the Java ecosystem and that uh, due to some uh, you know, release cadence changes and uh, various vendors changing their subscription models for Java, that there wasn't uh, necessarily a good vendor neutral stable build of uh, OpenJDK, a, bi a binary distribution that you Java end users could rely on for like years and decades to come. Um, and that's something that Microsoft is really proud to be part of, um, ensuring that you know you will have Java, which is free uh, as in bear and free as in use uh, for decades to come through the Adopt uh, pr project. And we're, we're going to continue to commit to that for, for, for some time, uh, I'm sure. So the other thing that uh, a lot of folks uh, may not be aware of is that uh, you know behind the scenes, Microsoft has been working very hard on what we call the, the product truth for Java. So it's not just our Java engineering group that is involved in Java at Microsoft. Uh, if you remember all the way to the start of the talk, we talked about building uh, the Java at Microsoft community uh, hub uh, internally. And uh, as we discovered, there were many, many Java service teams, uh, broadly uh, classed as Java on Azure. Um, so folks like Reza Rahman, uh, Ed Burns, Asir, Teresa Nguyen, folks, again, that you probably know from the Java community, have all been working incredibly hard on bringing first-class services uh, to, to Azure. So we're really proud to announce that we have the Azure Spring Cloud that went GA uh, back in September. Uh, so we've been working hand-in-hand -hand with Pivotal and VMware. Uh, Spring, obviously, Spring Cloud, Spring Boots, uh, really is a very popular microservice framework for all of you Java developers out there. And you can use it now as a platform as a service on, on Azure. So you get all of the benefits of you know, having your Kubernetes and containers managed for you because that's just horrible if you're a Java developer. Nobody likes that. Um, and you can have all of the security, horizontal scaling, logging, access to big data sources, uh, distribution across the globe, all that great stuff that Azure gives you today. Uh, but we haven't stopped there. Spring is just one of the broad ecosystem choices you can have. So we'll pop to the next slide. Uh, so Microsoft has this uh, attitude, this belief that instead of forcing you as the Java developer to change your application to work on our cloud, uh, we, we say you bring the Java the way you want. Um, and if you want to bring your Java and just lift and shift it onto VMs, then you're absolutely more than free to do so. And we support that 100%. If you are a little bit further in your sort of what we would call our cloud native journey or container journey, uh, we offer a lot of container as a service. So uh, the Azure Kubernetes service is our premier one for that. Uh, and again, takes all of that Kubernetes headache away from you. Uh, if you're already ready for the PaaS environment or for function as a service, you can use Azure's app service to uh, for Tomcat uh, support that's built in. We've got the Azure Spring Cloud I talked about before, and we have Azure Functions. So you can just do pure function functional code now as well. Um, so we really have a fantastic broad range to support. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, we've also, uh, as George alluded to earlier, we have partnerships with Oracle for WebLogic, IBM with WebSphere and CloudPacks. And recently, we've partnered with Red Hat to bring JBoss EAP to Azure as well. Uh, so I won't dwell on this slide for too long, but uh, needless to say, we now believe we have all of the major application servers covered plus Spring. So no matter what type of Java application you have, you can come and bring it to Azure and you'll get a great experience. All right, let's uh, carry on from there. Thanks, Martin. Um, so we felt it would be right to do a, a Java keynote with at least without at least mentioning Visual Studio Code. 
Um, about a year and a half ago, uh, they announced the coding pack for Java, which is super exciting. Um, and of course, Visual Studio Code is growing in popularity and it's perfect for the lightweight cloud native developer. Um, and so where does that fit in with Java developers? Well, you can now download the coding pack. Uh, and as part of that, you'll get VS Code. Uh, you'll also get a binary uh, of Java provided by Adopt Open JDK or any other vendor that you wish to swap in. Uh, and it also gives you all of the extension pack contents, which is great because it gives you such as things like syntax highlighting, uh, it gives you code completion, beautifying. Um, and so it's not perfect for everything, but if you want to be developing a lightweight Java application, this will work today. And, and it's say it's perfect for any cloud native Java developer. Um, I certainly use it for some Java development. I don't know if Martin, do you use it for Java development, Martin, at all? I have actually started to on, on some small microservice stuff I've been working on. So for my really heavyweight debugging big big desktop applications, I still go with IntelliJ's IDE, and and I don't think uh, VS Code is ever intended to be a fully fledged IDE like that. It is really the lightweight code editor for multiple languages. Uh, but I have found it's been incredibly useful for those microservices where I'm doing a bit of JavaScript, bit of Java, deploy to a container, so much faster in Visual Studio Code than uh, than IntelliJ for me personally, anyway. Yeah, that's great, and. Uh... And we may be able to grab a bit of time with Bruno later on and, and talk about that on the AMA. Uh, I know Bruno's a bit of a big advocate for the, uh, the VS Code plugin. So, oh, especially uh, as YAML support. Out. Yes, he loves <laughs> YAML. <laughs> so, um, so I guess that brings us to today, which is the JD Conf. Uh, the thing that Bruno forgot to mention earlier is that the after party is at 10 p.m. Uh, it depends what time zone you're in. Um, but We'll, we'll try and make an after party work. Uh, we're just basically all gonna put on headphones and listen to some really rocky music, I guess. Um, and there may even be beer if, if you've already stopped beer in your fridge. Um, so moving on, uh, we just wanna quickly cover sort of what the future looks like for our group. Uh, we're aware that we're sort of coming to the end and we're, we're thankful for you all listening. So uh, I'll hand back over to Martin, uh, who's just gonna tell us a little bit about what we've gotta look forward to. Cool. Uh, so this is focusing a little bit uh, purely on the Java engineering group as opposed to all of Microsoft at Java, but I'll touch on that as well. Um, so we're going to continue to work on OpenJDK performance enhancements. So you'll see us co continue to contribute mostly to the, the underlying hotspot VM. You'll see us do less work on the actual class libraries. We think Oracle and others do a fantastic job of that already, and we don't see a lot of customer demand on our side to, to radically change Java's APIs. They've, they've served uh, the ecosystem well for a long time. Um, You'll see us pushing heavily on uh, Java 8 to 11 plus migrations. Uh, Java 11 just gives you so many uh, developer uh, benefits out of the box um, from developer productivity, which I believe Venkat and others will get into further today, as well as under the hood performance improvements and the shrinkage of your JVM as well. If you use tools like JLink and JPackage, you can build these tightly packed, really small runtimes, uh, which is just fantastic. Um, but we really do want to hear from you. Right? Microsoft is here to learn. We're here. Um, you know, we have many years to catch up on here. Um, we want to listen. We want to understand uh, what you want out of us in the Java ecosystem. We do bring a lot of uh, developer tooling expertise here from Microsoft. We have runtime expertise. Obviously, the .NET Core is a very, very popular runtime out there in the world as well. Um, so we'd love to hear from you. Uh, and with that, uh, we will go jump to the last slide on how you can contact us. So to wrap up, we are committed to Java. Um, as you can tell, Microsoft has invested heavily. Uh, they've acquired a company. They've put together a Java engineering group. There's many, many Java and Azure teams are running. Uh, we have some product truth now. So if you want to bring your Java work out to Azure or try it, please do come and give it a go. If it's not working for you, we want to hear about it. Uh, and you know, you can give us that, that, that br brutally honest feedback through the Java at Microsoft Twitter handle there. You can email us at java at Microsoft.com. And of course, you can visit the Java on Azure uh, link there. So I think we're perfectly on time. So a big thank you from me and a thank you to George for being my co-speaker. This was really good fun. And I uh, hope to see you all in the Q&A and AMA later on. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, actually, gentlemen, because you're two British gentlemen. So we, use that more often. <laughs> we, we like to pretend. Uh, yeah, I mean, oh, that was amazing. Uh, I joined Microsoft for for like to do Java stuff in 2018, and um, I never thought we would be here today hosting a Java conference. Seriously, on my first day there, I was like, 
a developer advocate, and that's it. So here we are. We have a Java engineering group. We have a Java conference. We have uh, contributions to OpenJDK. We are working with Adopt OpenJDK. We have uh, lots of usage of Java internally, as we saw um, yesterday with Julia. So um, I think it's, it's, it shouldn't be a surprise to anyone, and especially ourselves, that you know Java at Microsoft is a big deal.